You ran around and fell to the ground and felt pain in your shoulder. You then got up and went to the dark and fell cause your shoulder. The shoulder consists of four joints, namely the sternoclavicular joint, acromioclavicular joint, glenohumeral joint and the scapular thoracic joint. This video will specifically focus on the glenohumeral joint and the anterior dislocation thereof. Glenohumeral dislocation refers to the disarticulation of the humeral head from the flat glenoid articulating surface of the scapular bone. This shoulder has relatively poor bony congruency and is highly mobile. Stability is inferred from the extra-articular structures such as the ligaments, muscles, tendons, the joint capsule and the soft tissue. The inferior glenohumeral ligament is the most commonly injured ligament during an anterior shoulder dislocation. Damage to the rotator cuff muscles or the axillary nerve can also res result in shoulder instability, increasing the likelihood of joint dislocation. History often reveals an incident of recent trauma to the shoulder. Atraumatic causes include ligament laxity resulting in voluntary or spontaneous dislocation with or without pain, a history of previous dislocations, congenital malformation of the glenoid or humeral head, and neuromuscular causes such as cerebral palsy and axillary nerve damage. The examination reveals pain and tenderness, pain and limitation in range of movement, the arm positioned in abduction and external rotation and is supported by the other hand. One can appreciate loss of normal shoulder contours with a squared deltoid profile. A prominent humeral head anteriorly below the coracoid process and a dip posteriorly. Lastly, a prominent acromion can be noted. As seen on the x-ray, the humeral head lies anterior to the glenoid of the scapula and inferior to the coracoid process. The glenoid fossa is empty and the humeral head can also be subglenoid, subclavicular or intrathoracic. Imaging helps to exclude fractures to the humerus and scapula and to classify the type of dislocation. The scope of this video does not cover posterior dislocation of the glenohumeral joint but it is important to recognise and manage. The arm is in adduction, held against the torso with the forearm in internal rotation. Make sure you obtain two views of the shoulder, AP and lateral scapula, and a modified axillary view. The most important intervention after recognising an anterior shoulder dislocation is prompt reduction of the glenohumeral joint. This is performed optimally under anaesthetic, but can be performed with adequate analgesia and conscious sedation. It is vital to perform a neurovascular assessment before you perform the reduction. Up to 40% of anterior shoulder dislocations are associated with axillary nerve damage. Therefore, check the pulses and the sensory and motor function of the axillary nerve before you perform the reduction. We will now demonstrate the various closed reduction methods for anterior shoulder dislocation. Remember the most important aspect of reduction is relaxation of the shoulder musculature. This is done with brief shoulder massage before the reduction is performed. This method is performed for any type of anterior shoulder dislocation, but kosher typically perform this method on the subcoracoid type. The maneuver is painless and no traction is utilized. The reduction will be ineffective if the greater tuberosity is avulsed or the joint capsule is torn. Kosher described this method as follows. Pressing the arm bent at the elbow towards the body, turning outward until resistance is felt, lifting of the outwardly rotated upper arm in the sagittal plane as far as possible, and finally slowly turning it inward. In medical terms, the humerus is adducted with the elbow flexed to 90 degrees. The shoulder is then externally rotated, the humeral head rotates around the fulcrum of the greater tuberosity. This step may result in reduction. The externally rotated arm is then lifted in the sagittal plane. The humeral head moves superior and posteriorly and now sits on the glenoid rim. Lastly, internal rotation is performed. During internal, this last movement, the humeral head slides back into the glenoid fossa. 
opt to utilise a different method in the geriatric population, as the gross motions typically result in humerus fractures. This method can be performed with or without the use of an assistant. This method is usually performed in theatre by the surgeon after the patient received an anaesthetic. The patient is lying supine. Grasp the affected arm at the hand and at the wrist and hold arm in 40 to 45 degrees angle of abduction. Apply slow, steady and gentle longitudinal traction to the affected arm. Place the heel of your foot in the axilla of the patient. This is used as a fulcrum to provide counter-traction. The modified Hippocratic method usually involves the use of assistant. A draw sheet is placed under the axilla of the affected shoulder as demonstrated. The assistant leans back and uses his or, his body weight, his or her body weight to apply counter-traction. This method does not require much skill and is easy to perform, but is associated with iatrogenic consequences due to the mechanism of the reduction. Possible complications are capsular tears, soft tissue injury, fractures, brachial plexus injuries, as well as the risk of anaesthetic. This method is the most preferred method of reduction used in the clinical setting. It is relatively safe, well tolerated, painless, effective and decreases hospital stay. No anaesthetic is required. This is performed with analgesia, with or without mild sedation. Stand on the same side as the affected arm whilst the patient lies in a supine position. Place your fingers over the affected shoulder to steady the shoulder and steady the humeral head with your thumb in the axilla. Slowly begin to abduct the shoulder and externally rotate the patient's arm into an overhead position whilst fixing the humeral head so that it does not move from its dislocated position. The humeral head in the axilla is then pushed over the glenoid rim with direct pressure of your thumb. If the shoulder has not reduced at this point, further internal rotation or reduction can be applied to attempt reduction. Once the shoulder is reduced, perform a neurovascular assessment and note any changes from the initial examination. Obtain post-reduction imaging to confirm the reduction of the dislocation. Thank you for listening to this video. We hope that it has helped your, you better your understanding of how anterior shoulder dislocations are reduced.